It was similar to another video I did about a cladogram that showed all five kingdoms. This one focuses either entirely or mainly on kingdom plantae, defend, depending upon how you define plantae. Um, like the previous video, this is mostly intended for my biology students. Um, anyone can watch it though. I think I get something like a hundredth of a penny for every hit, so uh, I feel more than welcome to do so. It's also uh, educational, so power to you. Alright, so um, on the final, I plan on giving you, the students, a um, list of the five clades to uh, organize. I give them to you in alphabetical order, and it's up to you to remember how to uh, organize them based upon how advanced they are. Um, the basically, this is the correct order. It's um, Caraphyta, then mosses, then ferns, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. Um, think about how advanced they are. Angiosperms, I could, if you have a question, I could tell you on the test that this means flowering plants, I guess. Um, basically, the ones that have flowers, those are the most advanced. Um, mosses are very small. Ferns get a little bit bigger, but they don't have seeds. Gymnosperms, think about tall um, conifers, tall uh, pine trees and the like, which are more advanced than ferns, and that angiosperms are more advanced than gymnosperms, even though they might ne necessarily be as big as the gymnosperms or as wide as the gymnosperms. Um, gymnosperms are cool. Um, angiosperms still make flowers and fruit, so they're, they're up there. And caraphyta, um, you might not even be able to think of any offhand. Um, they, um, they're really simple, so they're even lower down in this system than the mosses are. Um, the next step to do, basically, um, uh, they're given to you in alphabetical, once again, they're given to you in alphabetical order, and basically, um, the goal is to, um, organize them by how advanced they are. You could do it, angiosperms on the bottom, carified on top, your call. Um, the, the next step is to build the staircase. And the deal is, however you organize this, the staircase is leading towards the more advanced one. So, we start, um, with a fork, and it's always forks. So there's our first fork, and then another fork would be going like here, uh, like so, and then another fork is going like so, and then the last fork is over there. Um, once again, the staircase is leading towards the more advanced one. If you had carified on top, the staircase would be going like this. Um, and it's just a matter of aesthetics, but basically each fork is leading, each previous prong of the fork is leading towards the middle of the of the two clades uh, to which it would split, split further. So this one's going between angiosperms and gymnosperms. This one's going between ferns and gymnosperms. It just makes it look neater. Um, you don't have to do it as neatly, your call. Um, what's going on here? This is the common ancestor. Previously we had written Luca, which was the last universal common ancestor of all living things. Um, the you don't have to write that over here, but the, basically the way that this fits into our previous cladogram, just for some um, reference, this was the cladogram from the midterm. So we're looking here at plantae and caraphyta. Some people say caraphyta are part of plantae, um, and that the ones that we're looking the, the non caraphyta plantae are known as viridae plantae. Um, uh, that gets into our previous question about what's wrong with classification. Um, or what's difficult about it, why is it silly, and the like. So that's where we are here. Basically imagine this section getting expanded now. Plantae now it has four prongs. And it could happen with all these things. These could all get finer branched. A lot of these are just um, phyla. Each of those phyla could could um, expand a lot. Um, for instance, these are all one phylum. This is um, the uh, chordata. So that, that phylum is all this, and this is an entire domain which we have not expounded upon. And there's a lot of diversity of bacteria, archaea, fungi, and so forth. And now we're just looking at plantae. Um, so the next step is to figure out how these things differ. So you could, in theory, write on the lower um, fork, this has no protected embryo, this has no vascular tissue. But that's not as exciting as writing what they do have, the, the new advances. So that's the that would be drawn on each of these parts, the on the the tops of the steps or the bottom of the steps if it was upside down. But basically it's how you're getting there. So we make those prongs. One, two, three, four. That's just four things you have to remember for this um, final. 
And then you have to remember what they are. So the question is, what do all of these things, the Verita plantae, have that Caryophyta do not have? And the answer is these things have, or the land plants, Verita plantae, same thing. These um, clades have um, the protected embryo. Um, you could draw a line over here and call it Verita plantae. Your call. You don't have to. Um, there's a lot of other questions on the test. A lot of good questions. Mwaha. Um, the next question is, how do these clades differ from mosses? And Carifida. Um The new thing is actually it's mostly asking how it's different from mosses because there could be convergent evolution and the like. But the question is how do these differ from Carifida? And the question is vascular tissue. And Carifida do not have vascular tissue, but that's basically how it works. It's we're looking at the fork itself. How does that differ from the other fork? Not how does it differ from everything in the past? Um, so you could write over here, draw a line, and say these are the vascular plants. Once again, you don't have to. Next question, how do these differ from the ferns? And they have sperm in the name. Sperm means seed. So these are the seed plants, or spermatophyta, same thing. Um, they also have pollen. You can write pollen or seeds. Seeds is probably easier to remember. If you write pollen, that's fine too. You do not need to write both. If you do write both, I probably, I probably won't give you credit, uh, double credit. I don't know. Whatever. Figure it out, I guess. Um, easy to remember, though. Uh, angiosperms and gymnosperms. The difference there is that angio means um, housed seed, gymnosperm means naked seed. That's from the song. They do have naked seeds. I know that they're still cool. All right. Um, angiosperms have flowers. Um, they also have fruit. Fruit comes from the flowers. Um, fruit comes from the ovary in the flower. So that's the last difference. And when this finish, there you go. When that finishes the spinning, we have it there. So this is the finished cladogram. Not that difficult. You could make some sort of acronym, C M F G A, but you don't need to. It's just I give these to you, and just think about how, well. It's the order that we studied them, and it's also how advanced they are. Same thing here. How do they uh, differ from the previous ones? This is probably the most difficult one, and you've studied it for the midterm already. That is the um, the um, cladogram for the final. Hope you all do well. Take care.